Ghana's president, Nana Dodankwa Kofuado, is back on the news again because he took to his social media page and said, young people are immigrating to the US and the UK over a mirage. Now, maybe it's the message or maybe it's the messenger, but people did not take it kindly because the president himself was born and brought up, was rather brought up and studied in England. His children have an English accent. None of his relatives live and party and get treatment in Ghana. Yet, when we chase the same things that you're chasing now, it's a mirage. Because you want us to stay in the country that you're messing up and we keep working for minimum wage and contend with bureaucratic systems so we can keep enriching you while you and your family enjoy functional systems abroad and when we try to embed our lives, it's a mirage. Questions? Hello there, how are you doing? Welcome to another episode of our conversations. My name is Indira Ganga. I'm a business journalist by profession and a digital content creator. I love coming on here, having conversations with you guys about black people, Africans, our empowerment, and how we can rise up and take our rightful place at the global stage. Connect with me on social media at Indira Ganga, or you can come over to my YouTube channel. The name of the channel is Ondira. Oganga, where I profile Africa through people, politics, and culture. Now, Ghana's president over the Christmas season put out a Facebook post. I want to read it word by word before we get into dissecting it. So nobody says, hey, Ondiro, you paraphrased, Ondiro, you changed the meaning, Ondiro, that's not what he said. Aha, let us read what he said. He said, in my remarks, I stress that we, thus, cannot allow temporary poverty Yo, we got independence when? We got independence 40, 50, 60 years ago. It's not temporary poverty. This has now become generational poverty. And under development, 1960 until 2024, we are still talking about under development. We're still, you're still telling me that development is only concentrated in urban cities and people one hour outside of the urban areas do not have water, electricity, proper healthcare, proper education. What are you talking about, Akufuadu? to be the narrative of Africa, but it is, but it is. You're the president, why are you telling us that? You should be doing something to change it, right? You should be doing something to, what have you done for Ghana that has moved Ghana from point A to point B? Outside of white elephant projects that you've not completed, it was one D, one F, that your hospital project is in Shambhali. You touch one, you leave, you touch another, and this is not just a Kufuado, this is all African governments because that's how they're able to loot. Let's continue. A continent which is so blessed with natural resources and human resources. Let's explore the natural resources bit. Natural resources, yet 90% of the country's gold has been sold to Anglo Gold Ashanti. Under whose watch? Under whose watch? Under whose watch was the oil for gold deal sealed in Ghana? And it has become very controversial. Under whose watch were Ghana's resources being discussed on Al Jazeera's documentary of Gold Mafia, where the president was personally mentioned in, in fraudulent and criminal activities regarding people's natural resources, Ghana's natural resources. Then you talk about human resources. The very young people in Ghana that do not have jobs, what is the unemployment rate in Ghana? How many young graduates have left school and they do not have a job? Forget nurses do you know how many nurses have not been employed how many teachers have not been employed now they're leaving the country to go to the uk and the us to redo the whole thing again with the hope of a brighter future and those who stay do you know how much they make people make 200 dollars 300 dollars 400 dollars you know and these are not beginners these are people that have worked for five six seven years let us continue this I, I, I do not know what world some of these leaders leave when they write some of these things. He says, we cannot allow our collective fate to be, um, we cannot allow our collective fate to be decided by exogenous shocks thousands and thousands of miles away. I get it, President Addo, I get it. But over the last years, who has been saying that the reason why the Ghanaian economy is not doing very well is because of Russia, Ukraine, or is it not you? Who has been saying that the reason why Ghana's economy took a nose dive is because of COVID-19? Is it not you? Is it not you? Who? Who else? He continues to say, the time has come for Africans and persons of African descent to define their own narrative. Haven't we been doing that? Haven't we been doing that? 
We've gone to school under very strenuous circumstances. We've had many people went to school barefoot. They've had to go to school hungry. People have gone to bed hungry. People have been sick. Some have died at home. People have fought adversity to make this continent work. People have gone to wash toilets in America to send money back home to change the fate of the rest of the family members. So please do not lecture us about trying to cover our narrative because that's exactly what Africans do every single day. He goes on to say, we must de be defined by what we see in ourselves and not what others choose to say about us. They are within their rights to say what it is that they say about Africa. Because the more I examine it, how is it that diseases are still a problem? Poverty, hunger is still a problem in this modern day and age where there is irrigation technology. How is it that our people are still struggling with hunger? How is it that things as common as malaria is killing people? Isn't it in your own Ghana, your country, that HIV drugs were expiring at the port because of taxes and people wanted kickback? Is it not in your country? So yes, when the world judges us, we sit there and we take it because of structural failures emanating from leaders like you. And I'm not, I'm not excluding us from their blame because we're the people that put you in office. He continues to say, I've never, I can never get away from the oft-cited quote of that famous Jamaican reggae artist, Peter Tosh, because it very much sums up who we are and what our aspirations should be too much English. He said, he don't care where you come from, as long as you're a black man, you are an African. Who's disputing that, Hakofuato? <laughs> Who is disputing it? <laughs> we know we are Africans. Our brothers in the diaspora, when they come to the continent, we embrace them because we know they are part of us. Let us all remember that the destiny of all black people, no matter where they are in the world, is bound up with Africa. They know that. That's why they come back to the continent to try and infest. And do you know what? I've spoken to enough of them, interviewed several of them, those who choose to stay, face so many challenges and they say, irrespective of their adversity, I'm going to ride it out. But do you know what? There's some who are not used to the bureaucratic failure of the system and they leave. Electricity is not constant, not just in Ghana, not just in Nigeria, now in Kenya, in Tanzania, in South Africa, you know, water, labor is not necessarily cheap in some of these African countries. There's language barrier, the systems do not work, there's so much pride. There's only one African country that I've been to that, I, that nobody has asked for a bribe for me and that's Rwanda. And everybody who's come here to invest says the same thing, that the system works, it has its own challenges, but they're the only African country I know that have streamlined their government systems. All other places, if you want to do business, the hoops you have to jump through. Akufuado, why? Why are you acting as if you do not know these things, as if you're not the perpetrator of these things? He goes on to say, together, we must help make Africa the place for investment, Da water, electricity, labor, you know, government goodwill, taxes. How, how, how do you think an, a conducive environment, a, business, a conducive business environment is made? Progress and prosperity and not where our youth flee in the hope of accessing the mirage of a better life in Europe or the Americans. Let us explore the mirage. Didn't you study in the UK? What was wrong with the Ghanaian education system? What mirage were you chasing in the UK? Didn't you study there? Your children have a British accent. What mirage were they chasing there? You know, you people have holiday homes in America. That's how you go for treatment. What mirage are you chasing? Because we're poor, we do not deserve good things in life. Because you've systematically failed the country. When you campaigned and vied, you had a proper plan of how you were going to turn the economy around. Instead, under your watch, the economy tumbled, took a nosedive. The economy literally crashed. The country defaulted on debt. People literally have no hope. They're crossing the desert and the oceans, risking their lives, taking out all their investments in pursuit of a better life. And you call that a mirage? Let us continue. He says, we want to derive maximum dividends from our relations with the African diaspora in mutually beneficial cooperation and as partners for shared growth and development. Whew. Things like this really frustrate me. 
but to President Akufuado and all the other African presidents. Will you keep quiet? Do you know that meme? <laughs> because stop playing with us, man. We're not foolish. We could be poor, but we're not foolish. And we're not naive. We might not have traveled, but digital media has opened the world to us. We know what functional systems are, and we're not asking for a lot. Somebody doesn't have to pay through their teeth because they have a problem with their kidney. You don't have to die because you have HIV because HIV drugs are stuck at the port. You know, quality education should not be something that is compromised on. This is the future of your country and your children, yet you're politicking with SHS. Jobs are not something that young people should be begging for. They've gone to school. They want to work. They want to build the nation. Taxes are not something that businesses should be grappling with. It, there shouldn't be a, an unpredictable tax environment. You need a stable tax policy so that businesses know what they're dealing with. You cannot overtax your way. You cannot tax your way to development. No economy ever has. No economy ever will. And certainly it will not be an African economy. You will hit the laughers curb. You're smart enough to know what that means. I am tired of African leaders taking us for a ride and just saying what they think the global community wants to hear as if we are not people, as if we don't know what goes on in our own countries. So Kufuado, wake up and smell the coffee because this British rhetoric, this pan woke pan-Africanism is not gonna work. For as long as there's still poverty, hunger, disease, slow infrastructure de development, unemployment, and other deeply rooted systematic issues that can be fixed by proper leadership in Ghana, you have no right to lecture us on the decisions that we make. I'm pissed, man. I really am. But this is some of the things that we have to call out because for the continent to rise and get to, to where we want it to get, then some of these things have to be changed. They really, really, really have to be changed. Thank you for watching. Comment down below what you think. And was I harsh? Or you can resonate with some of these issues that I raised. And you know, you don't have to be Ghanaian, whichever part of the African continent you come from, do some of these challenges resonate with you? Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again next time.